All right, let's talk about polyhedrons. A polyhedron is a three-dimensional figure that's formed by polygons that enclose a specific region in space. A polygon is basically a shape that has specific hard sides and more than two of them, which, you know, obviously if it's going to actually be a shape, it's going to have to have more than two sides anyway, because two sides just form an angle. They don't actually form any kind of a shape. As long as there are at least three sides, however, it can enclose a space. If there are three sides to a shape, then it's going to be a two-dimensional shape. What we want is a whole group of two-dimensional shapes that actually enclose some region of space. Um, so a polygon can be any of a whole lot of different shapes or a whole lot of different sizes, but it has to be made of flat edges and it has to enclose some region of three-dimensional area. Um, any place where any two edges, any two uh, uh, edges of the shapes come together is called a vertex. So if we have, say, this edge across the top part of this cube right here and this edge down here, where these two edges join is sort of a corner of the shape. We call that a vertex. Anytime you have a corner on your shape, it's a vertex. Now, if you have two faces that come together, say this big wide area down here and the top face up here, those two faces come together and that long corner there is called an edge. So an edge is where two faces intersect and a vertex is where two edges intersect. Next, we're going to talk about the different kinds of polyhedrons. There's only so many uh, polyhedronal shapes that actually can be formed from a single basic shape. Uh, a regular tetrahedron, for example, is formed of triangles. You have one triangle on this side, one on this side, one on the back that we can't see, and then one on the bottom. So it's formed, on, formed entirely of triangles. A cube is formed entirely of squares. A regular octahedron is eight sides, one, two, and then there's a third one back over here, and another one directly opposite over here for four on top and four on the bottom. So it's an eight-sided shape, but again, they're all the same shape. This time they're triangles, again, like the first one, but it's an eight-sided shape formed out of triangles. A regular dodecagon is 12 sides, again, um, formed on this case by uh, pentagons, all pentagons connecting to each other. And then finally, we have a regular icosahedron, which is a 20-sided figure. So those are the only shapes, actually, that, one, two, three, four, that can be formed, um, the only polyhedrons that can be formed out of single shapes. Any other polyhedron has to be formed with different shapes put together. So these can, these five are kind of special, and these are ones that we actually have um, a list of that we, we have specific names for because they're the only ones that can be formed that way. And then finally, we're going to use a little bit of Euler's theorem. Euler's theorem basically is just a relationship between the number of faces on a polyhedron and the number of edges and the number of vertices. And it, what, it, what it tells us is that if we take the number of faces on a polyhedron and add it to the number of vertices, that that total will be equal to the number of edges if we add two. So for this shape right here, you can see we have five faces. We have this one that's on the side toward us, one on each end, one on the side opposite us, and one on the bottom. And then we have six vertices because we have three corners on each end, one, two, three, four, five, six. So five and six is 11. If we set 11 is equal to the number of edges plus two, that means we need to subtract two from each side to make it equal. And that tells us that there would be nine edges on the shape. And again, we could count those if we wanted. We'd have, for long ones, we'd have one, two, three, and then short ones, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you can see, obviously, the theorem is pretty easy to check out. And we're going to use this theorem quite a bit in our uh, example questions. And we're going to move on to those now. So let's take a look at them.